Hey, what's going on, everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Lux OS Commander. This is a little GUI, little app, right, that we can use to kind of find our ASIC hardware or miners, if the correct terminology, because ASICs are the chip within the miners. And we can actually apply a firmware from Lux OS. Now, why would you want to add custom firmware? Well, because it might make your device a little bit more efficient. So, we're going to be taking a look and doing a quick overview on the Lux OS Commander. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, Lux or, or Lux OS is a custom firmware that these guys develop, and there are fees tied to it, but they not only have their own mining pools, which you can use to manage, maintain, or monitor your various bits of hardware, uh, but you can also add their firmware or apply their firmware and get some customized ability out of it. Now the fees are as follows, right? You can see retail as a 2.5% fee, firmware is 2.8%, but if you use the pools plus the firmware, it's only 2.8%. Uh, you know, mid-size, institutional, large scale, and you can always contact their team if you are a large scale operation and maybe they'll work with you. But if you're gonna be using their firmware, but not in their pool, just know that the fee is going to be a little bit more than probably what you're anticipating. Now, they have a plethora of downloads that you can do. And it depends on your devices. And that was one of the devices I forgot to call out in my previous video was Xilinx. So control boards, right? It could be a Xilinx board, uh, a Beagle uh, board, AM Logic, so on and so forth. Uh, so there is a compatibility list that you do want to confirm and make sure that your model is supported right now we're not talking about the what's miners or anything like that we're focusing on bitmain asic mining equipment right so you got the t19 control board xilinx model number all is supported um and then, then they got the s19 pro the j pro the j pro plus it supports for xilinx uh beagle bone uh, AM logic and then here's the model number for that board here's the model number for just a J pro non plus and then the K pro we want to go and make sure that this model number is supported right for our particular device that we're going to be looking at now where do you find this model number where it's going to be on the front hand side of your particular device or even on the control board itself matter of fact let me take you over to the other camera and show you what our particular hash board or model is all right, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to hear me because this thing is really loud, but it's not on the front side of your S19K Pro. It's gonna be on the left side, right there. You see it? Yeah, that's the model number we need to verify works with the Lux OS or firmware. So now you know where it is on your particular miner, at least for the S19K Pro, everything is a little bit different. And the team did put a nice little guide here to help you find where that particular model number is. We did just confirm, as you saw from the screenshot that might be appearing on your screen right now, is we do have model BHB56902. So we are good to go. So now there's a couple things we can do. We can go and download the firmware for our particular uh, device, right? So Luxar firmware images installs, remote install, how to do it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we can use the batch CLI tool, um, which helps us this command line tool that scans your network ASIC miners or devices, identify the machine models and manage multiple rigs at once. Or we can use the commander Lux OS. Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna need a license um, but we'll probably address that in a future video. If not, uh, I'm going to get with the team and ask it publicly on Twitter, but let's open up the miner or the GUI itself. Here's the GUI, right? In all its glory, everything that we need. So Lux OS commander version 0 0.7.3, uh, nice little neat GUI. Doesn't get too much, uh, craziness. It doesn't go overboard. It's not overbearing anything like that, but we just need to configure and make sure that our network's on there. Now, by default, you're gonna have two networks. So you need to configure the networks because the default ranges may not work for you, right? These top two may not work. You can just remove them by clicking a little trash can or you can uncheck them to remove them from the scan. And you just want to make sure you scan your IP or add your IP range. Now, either you can put in the specific IP of the machine itself, right? So 192.168 or whatever it might be, .0.1 or whatever it could be. Or you can put the range. And so that's what I did here. So I put the range of IPs. It's going to scan throughout all of that. 
And when we hit scan network, it's going to look for the device. So let's let that run. And we should be able to find multiple devices on our network. You will see that we have our devices showing up here. Uh, but I am operating at a bit of a handicap because of the control board that I am using. Now, this program is scanning the network, looking for devices. And oddly enough, it's detecting the Grin G1 Mini Miner as a Bitmain OS, which I find kind of funny. Uh, but this is the um, Apollo or iPolo or whatever you want to call it, G1 Mini. Then we have the Wets Miner, which is not compatible with Lux OS. Uh, but technically, if you did have a compatible device, you would just select it and then click Install Lux OS. But again, because I am operating on a bit of a handicap, I cannot do that with my devices. These devices are not compatible. And on the website itself, uh, the download center, it does say AM Logic Remote Install. It doesn't have the download option for like the uh, Bagel Board, uh, uh, Bagel, Beagle Board or Xilinx Board. Uh, so you have to click Remote Install, which takes you to a form that you've got to fill out and let them know what you're rocking, select your device, number of machines, so on and so forth. And then you will request a remote install. So I would have to do that for my S19K Pro, unfortunately. Whereas if I had a different control board with Xilinx or the Beagle board, I could just go ahead and click download, follow the instructions, grant licenses, all that good stuff. Obviously stuff that you need to agree to. And then the download would start, which it has started in the top right, right behind me. You can't see it. So now I got the firmware for the Xilinx board, but that's not the one I have, which is where the compatibility checker comes into play, making sure that you're not downloading and trying to force install the wrong firmware. As you, some of you may know with your various GPUs, uh, force installing the wrong firmware or vBIOS can often brick your device. But the point being is that the Lux OS Commander is pretty cool. Like, I can see at least the hash rate. I can see the OS type. It can't detect the control board or the hash board or this one. But I'm, I'm pretty sure if I did have Lux OS firmware already installed on some of these devices or on my compatible ones, I would be able to see that information here. So it makes it nice and neat. Nice little GUI. Otherwise, you can use the batch, uh, you know, command line interface tool that Lux um, in you know allows and there's different versions for it. There's Windows, Linux, ARM, so on and so forth, and it's just a command line interface. Some of which you might be used to. Now there's AMD 64 and ARM 64, so I'm gonna choose AMD 64. Let that download. It's gonna open up, warn me about it, run anyway, and then we should have a command line interface in which we can interact with and manage our devices. But I just wanted to go over just the Commander OS or the Lux OS Commander. Lux, our team has been doing a really great job. I love some of the things they've been working with as far as like Pivotal Pleb and being able to run your ASICs or some of your S19s and S19Js on 110, 120 volt instead of having to have 220, 240 volt. So really intre interesting overall team, intriguing, and just one of many options out there uh, that allow you to uh, install customized firmware with the dev fee, of course, uh, on your ASIC devices and improve it that much uh, more or try to make it that much more efficient or get that extra hash. Just depends on what your end goals are. But that's going to do it for today's video. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit notification button to stay up to date. As well as check out additional links in the description. Don't support the channel and what we do here. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.